Hey everybody, welcome to video number three in this series about AppWrite functions. So in the last video, we built and deployed our first function. And in this video, we wanna actually take a look at the code to do a deep dive and better understand how to build these functions out and how everything operates. So let's quickly recap this function right here. We have this minimalist function and all it's doing is returning back this text response. So we're exporting an async function and that's it. So when we call some kind of URL endpoint, this is what we're gonna see. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the context object. So let's go ahead and just pass this in. And the context object is something that has to be passed into every single function by default. And this is what allows us to handle communication between the end user and the app right console. So all input, output, and login to the console has to be handled through this context object. Now, what we could do here is actually just use the context object like this here. So it contains the request, the response, the log, the error, and we can simply just call context.response and handle it this way. Now, what you were seeing earlier is the destructured context object, and it's simply a lot cleaner to do things this way right here. So now we get that request, the response, the log, and the error, so we don't have to prepend everything with context. So let's go ahead and take a look at the request and response now. And for this, I'm gonna lean on the AppWrite documentation and that's gonna be on AppWrite.io. I'll click on docs here and then we can go to functions and then we'll go to development. So here's where we can read all about it. I'd highly recommend taking a look at this. This is where we can see the function life cycle. If we scroll down here, this is where we can see the definition to the context object and the four properties that are passed in here. So let's go ahead and take a look at request first. So we'll click on this and inside of the request, this is any information that's passed along when a function is being executed. So here we can get that kind of information like the body that was passed in. If we sent a post request and we sent data, you can get that by calling request.body. If we wanna get the headers, we can call request.headers. If we wanna see the HTTP method, let's say, we can simply call request.method and this will let us know if it's a put, get, post or delete request. We can get the URL, host, port name, path, query, and so on. So everything that has to do with the initial request or execution. Now, for the response here, this is where we can actually send data back. So we call response, and we've already seen send. This just sends back a string. We've already seen JSON in that starter function. Uh, we can also send back empty or perform a redirect. So we can choose what kind of data we're sending back to the user. So let's go ahead and actually see this in action. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna figure out what kind of request we had and send back data according to that specific HTTP request. So if we get a, a get request, we'll send back one message. If we get a post request, we'll send back another message. So here, let's just go ahead and create a condition. And we're just gonna say if, and then from here we'll do request.method, spelled that wrong. If this is equal to get, let's go ahead and just send this back here. So we'll just throw this in here. And we're just gonna say this was a get request. So we're not really sending any information back other than some text. So we'll just say this was a get request. Then we wanna go ahead and just check if it's a post request. So we'll just check request.method. If this is equal to post, then at this point, what I wanna do is actually send back some information. So I wanna send back some environment variables that we're about to set up and also the data that was sent to the user. So essentially, if I send a post request with some data, we're just gonna get it right back and I just wanna see how this works here. So we'll just do return and we'll just do response.json. So request response, okay, I just want to make sure I had that right. And within this, let's go ahead and do sent data. So when a user sends data, we're just gonna fire it right back and we're gonna test this out to actually see how this looks. And to get that data, we're gonna call request.body. So this is how we get that information from the user and then we're just gonna send it back. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how to actually get environment variables. And we're also just gonna go ahead and respond to the original sender with this information. I know it's not practical, we're just getting information and sending it back, but the purpose of this is so you can actually see the output and make sure everything is working. So here, we're just gonna respond with the function level or global environment variable. And we'll just go ahead and set this up and we'll call this uh, dog env. It doesn't matter what the name is. We'll just create an environment variable for the dog name, I guess. So we'll just call this dog env. And in order to actually get an environment variable that we're about to set up, we just simply need to call process dot env. 
and then we'll just call this uh, dog underscore name. So that's gonna be the name of our environment variable. So this will be the project level or global, and then let's just put in cat env. So cat underscore, or no, we won't do an underscore, we'll just do env. And the reason why I'm using these names is I'm trying to show you it's completely up to you what you call them here. So process.env, and we'll just call this cat underscore name. So this is the function level. So we're gonna get these environment variables and we'll send them back. So let's go into our project. So we'll grab this value right here, dog name. To set the function, actually the uh, project level environment variable, we'll go to settings here and we'll scroll down. So this is not in the function, it's in the project. And we'll go to a global variables right here. We'll go to editor and dog name will simply be uh, Rocky. So we'll just do that. And that's going to be that environment variable. And then for the function level environment variable, we'll just do starter function settings. And we can jump down here. Let's see. We'll go ahead and go to editor. And let's just go ahead and get rid of that one. We'll just do cat underscore name. And for cat, we'll just call the cat snowy. Okay. So again, we always use weird things like that just to differentiate them. So cat name, dog name, and let's go ahead and just deploy this function. So let's see, why is that not working? Okay, there we go, so it's saved. Okay, so now with this function, let's do get status. Make sure it's all saved. We'll do git add, git commit, and we'll just do dash dash, and git push dash u origin main, deploy that. It's gonna build, so if we go back to the function, it's currently building. We can close that out, and we'll wait for this to finish, and then we can test this actual endpoint. Okay, so if I go to this URL here, we're gonna see what we originally got back on the get request. So this was a get request, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna test this post request, and I'm gonna test it in my own environment. So what I'm gonna do is use Postman. If you have Postman or a tool like it, Go ahead and practice with that. So I'm gonna leave that part up to you, but I already created a Postman account. I already created a project and we're just gonna test this request here and I'm gonna pass in this URL. So if I send this, here we go. We see this was a get request. If we do post here, let's go ahead and send some body data. We'll do raw and JSON. And let's just go ahead and say name, name is Dennis Ivy, and let's go ahead and send it. Okay, so here we go. Now we see the response, sent data, the environment variable. So we have we don't have Rocky or Snowy anywhere within our function. It's in that environment variable. So we got those, we got the global one, the function level environment variable, and the original data. So that's it for processing that data back and forth. What we're gonna do next is actually go ahead and create a second function within this folder. So right now, we have our function in the root directory, but there are many cases where you might wanna have more than one function in your project, all within the same GitHub repo. So we're gonna end the video by separating this out and creating a second function. So to make room for a second function, what I'm gonna do is separate this into its own folder. So this function is gonna be moved over into a folder called function one. When you have a actual use case for this function, you would obviously have a different name here, but let's go ahead and move everything into function one and we'll remove or we'll move over package.json, send all this into function one. So it's gonna be the same folder structure, just all within function one now. Okay, so I'm gonna redeploy this in a second, but before we do that, I also need to go ahead and go to my function and I need to change the file path here. So we're still starting at source and then go into main.js but the get setting needs to point to function one like that. Okay, so we have a new file path, so we're going in there, and then we're going to source and main.js. So we'll go ahead and update that. And what I'm gonna do here is make the push, make sure this works, and then we'll add in the second function. So we'll do git add, git status, or git commit, we don't need to check the status. And I won't make any notes here. We'll just do git push dash u origin master main. So 
if we have any issues with this, we're gonna see this in the build log. So it's a perfect chance to potentially see this issue. So let's go ahead and go back to our starter function. Let's go ahead and see this. Let's make sure it's working. In GitHub, this is all gonna be different now. So if we go to starter, now we see function one. And let's see, let's go back here. It's ready. We'll go ahead and test this. So I just need to refresh it. I feel like I'm calling it too early, that's why. Okay, so now it's working. So we took our, we took our function and we moved it into its own folder and it's still working. So glad that turned out. And let's go ahead and create a second function now. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and go to start or create a new function and we'll just use another starter template. We'll go to create a function. Uh, we'll just call this second function. And for the runtime, we'll just select node. Let's continue. We don't need to worry about that. And let's just go ahead and add it to an existing repository now. So we already have one, we're gonna connect it to that. And then we'll just go ahead and put this into, let's see, what was our repo called? It was starter, I believe. So we need to find that. So here we have starter. We'll go ahead and connect it to that repo. And this one's gonna be called function two. So we have function one and function two. We're still creating a main branch. We'll go ahead and hit create there. And let's go ahead and see what's inside of our GitHub repo. So it's processing, the function is deploying. And let's go ahead and check this out. So if I refresh this, now we see function two. So once it's done building, we'll test it. And we just wanna test the two URLs if everything works. Now we have two separate functions deployed that we can clone locally and actually test out. So if I go ahead and run git pull within my local repo, repo, I'll be able to see that. So this is the new function. Let's go ahead and test it. Again, I probably clicked it too early. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try that one more time here. And I should see the new function. And here we go, we see hello world. And if we go to function one, or actually the starter function. So function one is called starter function. And if we go to the domain, let's open that up. And here we will see this is a get request and hello world. So we have two functions now. So in the next video here, we're actually gonna go ahead and build out this function from scratch. So we've been using the starter template, but I wanna actually go through this entire process so you can actually build it out on your own and really understand how it all comes together.